We're in the hot spring town of Lurgavatn, Iceland, where out of the volcanic, muddy ground comes the most pristine rye bread. Everywhere you look in Iceland, there seems to be something bubbling, whether it's a geyser, a lagoon, and the geothermal bakery here is no different. But how do they cook the bread here without an oven? Let's go find out. In Iceland, we met with Sigi Ron Helmarsson, general manager at Lurkvarten Fontana. This is our <laughs> main tool. He followed in his grandmother's and mother's footsteps in this hot volcanic sand. This is his bakery, no matter the weather. The process starts with Siggy making the dough. He uses four cups of rye, two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. So why is it that you use rye then? Well, rye has been used in Iceland for, for uh, decades. It's uh, something that uh, originally came from Denmark to Iceland. And then we add milk to this. And that's cow's milk? Yeah, cow's milk, yeah. yeah. The milk is uh, from the area from the cows in the area. And uh, there is a company in Selfos about 25 minutes away from here that uh, produces it. And you get this so fresh every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a really a, a, a local thing. The butter we use comes from, comes from the same company, same cows. So what's the art to making this then, to stirring this up? Yeah, just put love in it. Put <laughs> love <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is your family recipe. Yeah, this is the same recipe my <laughs> grandmother and you know mother was very using. If you go around the country, this is done in a few places. Mm. Uh, some people use uh, honey or syrup instead of sugar. But this is the way it has been done here and uh, I am just simply honoring that tradition. So how will you know when this is done then? It's, it's supposed to look basically more or less like this. So I think we... We have a really good dough here. When the dough is ready, he pours it in a tin lined with butter. Do you have to use a special tin for this? It needs to be strong because, as you can see on the lid here, it's been uh, banked quite heavily with a shovel, you know, when we are digging it up. The people use all kind of things to, to bake this bread here. You can even, uh, there are some people that use uh, uh, empty Macintosh chocolate beer box, you know, for this. But, but this pot uh, works well for us. Stainless steel. Uh. The dough is covered with a layer of baking paper, then wrapped in film. Do this here. Just one circle like this. And then we put it on top. Do you make this with your kids then? My kids love this. Yeah. Yes. And how long will you bake this for? 24 hours. 24 yeah. hours, wow. 24 hours in the ground. Hmm. It's amazing if you, if you bake it for shorter time, like 17, 18 hours, it uh, usually doesn't turn out good. And if we bake it for too long, 25, 6, 7, 8 hours, it starts to you know, compress. So the 24 is the magic. So we're good to go. Huh. Oh, it's actually quite heavy. Yeah, and this is our <laughs> main tool for the for oh. this baking. It's time to put our bread in its oven, aka the hot springs of the lake here in Lagvarten. The sand by the lake can host from 10 to 15 tins of bread. Siggy can either dig a completely new hole or reuse one from the day before. It's good to pile, pile, uh, make a good pile on top of it. Just to make this isolation, you know. Yeah. Why do you pat it down like that? To make it more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have ugly bread in no. this view. Yeah. And the mark. Mm. Voila. And we always mark the holes with a, a stone like this, so the other locals know that we are baking. Yeah. No matter how the weather is, the recipe is always the same. When we have a lot of rain and uh, the snow melting from the mountains, this lake can rise up to meter, meter and a half. Then this area here will all be underwater. Oh, right. So we, a few times our breads have basically drowned. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. poor it's bread. Like, it's over there. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, guessing that's not good to eat then. Nah, nah. again. Yeah. More like a bread soup or yeah. something. Yeah. 
This one's been in for 24 hours. Yeah. And you can see there's a lot of energy going on here. Oh, wow. Ah. Wow, that is hot. How hot is that? It's about boiling temperature, actually. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Just love that sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's why it's called lava bread, then. Ah. That's the reason for lava bread. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take most of the sand away from it. And then we open it up just to let the air come in. Um, uh, uh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. It, it's looking very promising. Oh, really? Yeah. You want to do it? Um, I'm going to have a go. I yeah. Do, Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. My bread children. <laughs> yes. Now we are going to try this inside. I'm going to cut it into slices and serve it with uh, smoked trout from the lake. Mm. But it also tastes really good with boiled eggs. Yeah. Hot spring boiled eggs. So we're going to... One cracked open a little bit. Oh. And that, that is the most novel uh, way I've ever seen yeah. anyone cook an egg. <laughs> yeah. hmm. And we leave them here for 13 minutes. I mean, look at that. <laughs> that is incredible. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. It's such a delicate process yeah. with such a big spade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like yeah. Yeah, we did this. <laughs> it's so delicate. Yeah. I love it. If you touch wow. the sand. Can I touch? Uh, if you just feel how hot it is. Ooh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's also fun to touch the leg. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's and people just swim in here every morning. No, not not every morning. If you, it's you want to be swimming out there where it's, the water is colder. Yeah. Here is a uh, hot spring water coming out. Oh, of course. Oh, but still, also, if you look closely in the water, can you see the fish over there, the little fish? This fish is the only fish in the world that has a hot tub, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. Okay, yeah. I we'll think do. we are just about done. So it's actually quite a dangerous area, but I mean, I see you've got a danger hot spring. Show. Yeah, it's, it's all, you know, quite warm. The smell of that is amazing. Yeah, it yeah. is. Huh. Oh, yeah. It's like almost like burnt toffee kind of smell. Yeah. It's really, really sweet. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So how can how can you expect this to taste? What's the taste of this going to be like? Like it's a unique taste for itself. But a lot of our um, visitors from other countries say it reminds them of like a gingerbread. Really nice texture. It, uh, it's quite like, like a heavy bread. Yeah. And because it just came from the spring, they're, they're quite warm. What's the most traditional way to serve this bread? Exactly like we're doing right now. Yeah. And you can see how the butter starts to melt right away, you know? How old is this recipe? How, how traditional is this? Well, I, I've been trying to track it down and I'm in uh, very late 1800, early 1900, some of there. Okay, now we have the, the hot spring egg here. That is a perfect looking egg. Should we try? Yeah. Do we cheers? What do we cheers. say? Cheers, yeah. What's the Icelandic term? If, instead of cheers? Yeah. Skals. Skals. Yeah, skals. Skals. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. It is really sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like gingerbread. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Ah! <laughs> yeah, oh, well done. A true Viking. Oh. This is probably the most wholesome thing I've ever done. <laughs>